Hi, I'm Manuela, and I want to thank a lot of people that commented on a video that I made before on Genesis 22. So, um, I felt encouraged by those people to make another video on something that I found happening in Numbers 22, which, and I have a book in production now, it's called The Old Ones and it should be released about October, November 2014. It's uh, not a children's book, it's a young adult novel. And as I began writing that book, I felt the Lord impress on my heart two things. One, that in writing this book for young adults or for, for whoever read it, I was in essence a teacher and that I would be held to stricter standards the thing that he pressed on, impressed on me was that I needed to have a very good understanding of the Bible and not just as what um, learned in Sunday school or in church. So in 2010 I began reading the Bible and now uh, I've, I've been through it nine times and, and my kids say that I bra I'm bragging when I say that I've read that many times but I'm not. I'm just trying to to help you understand that when you read the Bible and I, I actually, when I say read the Bible, I have a, an app on my all of my technology called Bible Is that is uh, an audio Bible. And I actually read and listen at the same time and somehow it seems to open a completely different pathway of understanding. So I'm actually reading out of the NIV. Uh, I like to do devotionals or just, you know, read for comfort and, and support and pleasure out of the NIV. Verse 22. Um, just a little brief history, uh, Joshua was just bringing the children of Israel out of the wilderness after all of the, um, the older people died, the ones uh, who tested God over and over again for 40 years in the wilderness. They all died and so Joshua, after Moses died, brought the children out of the wilderness. And they went up the, against the Amorites and defeated them. Now, the Amorites were giants. Sihon and Og. Og, it is said that his bed was just like huge. It was made of iron and it was like 15 feet long or you know something like that. But just a real quick little tidbit. Jordan, the River Jordan originates from Mount Hermon which is in the extreme northern part of Israel. Uh, and it is said that Mount Hermon is where the fallen angels came down from heaven and, and that's where the, the people in that area, they cohabited with the daughters of men. And so it is possible that those, the Amorites, the giants, Sihon and Og were um, a product of the, the marriages between the fallen angels and the daughters of men. Just a little tidbit, something for you to think about. Okay, so that's where they're coming across the Jordan there. And the, the Moabites in that area were really, really afraid. Okay, so I'm going to start reading in verse 4. Okay, so the Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Now, the Israelites, when they came out of the wilderness, there were millions of them. And so I can understand why Moab would be afraid. So Balak, the son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who is at Pethor near the river in his native land. And um, my footnotes say that that river was the river Euphrates. A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I'll be able to defeat them and drive them out of the country. For I know that those you bless, those who you bless are blessed, and those who you curse are cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the fee for divination. When they came to Balaam, they told him what Balak had said. Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will bring you back the answer the Lord gives me. So the Moabite princes stayed with him. Okay, before I go any further, I want to point out to you that when you see in the Bible the word Lord and it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that always is translated from the word um, yod heh vav -Hey, which is what we get Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, and I prefer to say Yahweh because there is a group of Christians, Syrian Christians in the area that um, 
that Abraham came from that they call his name Yahweh and these are people if you've been keeping up with the news that are being crucified and slaughtered methodically I will bring you back the answer the Lord or Yahweh gives me so Balaam says that he can speak to Yahweh so God came to Balaam and asked who are these men Balaam said to God Balak son of Zippor king of Moab sent me this message a people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land now come and put a curse on them for me perhaps then I'll be able to fight them and drive them away but God said to Balaam do not go with them you must not put a curse on this people because they are blessed okay so there are two things there for God is translated from the word Elohim uh, it's Strong's number 0433 times um, according to tradition it can mean uh, the Most High God the one that we call Jehovah Yahweh Yahweh but it can also mean mighty ones judges angels powerful ones it, it can mean a whole bunch of things and this word Elohim that this word here capital G-O-D is translated from is used all over the Bible and it is especially the words where you see the word little g-o-d so my question is how did the translators know to capitalize God here when it's used every time you see the word God even little g-o-d that's the same word used so I want to just submit that to you and the second thing is here is this God that that came bodily to Balaam and Balaam had to, he came and he asked, who are these people? Or, or why have these people come? So Balaam had to tell him who they were, where they came from, and what they wanted. So many places in the Bible, it says that, and I'll, I'll put a list up, that God knows everything. God knows our, all the way Matthew 10 even says God even knows how many hairs are on our head. So here's this. Elohim not Yahweh that came down and asked him who they were what they wanted and where they were from and Balaam had to tell him the whole thing so I don't think that this is the same God Yahweh okay and the other thing is in verse 12 but God said to Balaam do not go with them you must not put a curse on these people because they are blessed now think about in the Bible all the different places where God is talking to someone um, for example, where he talked to Abraham, he said, I will bless you, or I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those that curse you. Um, every time Yahweh is talking, he speaks in the first person, he says, I will bless you, I, I, I. Here, if this was Yahweh, if this were Yahweh, Yahweh, he would say, you must not put a curse on those people because I bless them. And that's not what he said, so this cannot be, this must be a different God okay so the next morning Balaam got up and said to Balak's princes go back to your own country for the Lord has refused to let me go with you and that word capital L-O-R-D is Yahweh so I but it says that the devil can even disguise himself as an angel of light so I'm wondering if Balaam thinks he's talking to Yahweh but he's not so the Moabite princes I will return reward you handsomely and do whatever you say come and put a curse on these people for me but Balaam answered, even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God, of Yahweh my Elohim. Now stay here tonight as the others did, and I will find out what else the Lord will tell me. This is verse 20. Tonight, God came to Balaam and said, since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Okay. So that night, first of all, I know 1 John tells us that we are children of the light. We are not children of darkness or children of the, the light. And as I'm thinking here, I can't remember any instances where the Lord God, Yahweh God, came down to anyone at night except maybe in a dream. So this, this Elohim came down to Balaam at night and told him to go 
when in verse 12, if it was the same one, he just told him not to. Maybe these are two different Elohim. I don't know. I want you to read it and you find out. Uh, uh, but you know, God never changes, right? He doesn't change his mind. I bet you can think of different places in the Bible where he says, I will not change my mind. Um, so, Balaam got up in the morning, verse 21, saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God was very angry. He went, and an angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Oh, what just happened? In verse 20, God told him to go. In verse 22, God is angry because he went. Now, there's two possibilities. Number one, God is schizophrenic. Well, maybe there are three possibilities. If this is some someone in the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one of them came down and told him to go and the others told him not to, um, I don't think that's possible. Or number three, this is a different God, or these are two different beings. Because this, the one in verse 20 told him to do something that Yahweh doesn't want him to do. But God was very angry when he went, and an angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him, okay? Balaam was riding his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, an angel of Yahweh standing in the road with a sword drawn in his hand, she turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat her to get her back on the road, and she's trying to save his tail. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between two vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of Yahweh, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat her again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and he beat her with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth. And she said to Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, you have made a fool of me. If I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord, Yahweh, opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw an angel of Yahweh standing in the road with his sword drawn, so he bowed low and fell face down. Okay, so once again in verse 20, an Elohim that was not capital L-O-R-D told him to go, and he's getting in trouble, and that angel is so mad that he wants to kill him. God's not schizophrenic. That is not Yahweh. That is a different Elohim. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I've come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned away, I would have, would have killed you by now, and I would have spared her. So here, verse 34, Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord, the angel of Yahweh said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Okay, so you remember in verse 20, the Elohim, which was not Yahweh, said that night God came to Balaam and said, since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. And you have to wonder what that Elohim was going to have Balaam to do that made Yahweh so mad that he wanted to kill Balaam. Think about it. Our house is our children, our grandchildren. So don't believe anything I say. Read for yourself and try to understand it for yourself and let your children see you digging and trying to understand and let them hear you praying, Lord, show me the truth and don't let me believe lies. So thank you for watching this video and um, I'd like to present some more things that I found in the future and thank you so much.